Hi, today we're looking at wax wings again, but this time I want to try and do them in flight. And this is very close to home now, this is in Birmingham, and it's a very busy main road. So I won't be doing much to camera, because you won't be able to hear me most of the time as the traffic comes flying past. I've just waited for this gap for about 20 minutes, and it's the biggest gap I've had so far. This is a very typical habitat for waxwings. In these eruption years, when they come to the UK in large numbers, they come right into the middle of our cities and our towns, looking for berries. And this, photographically, is a wonderful spot. The trees are all very short, they're low down, and they are covered in berries. They have a preference for the yellow or orangey coloured berries. They will take the white or pinky ones, but these are what they prefer. What has been in short supply all winter in the UK is sunshine. This was a very rare event to have the sun shining while I was photographing them. This is taken with the Lumix G9 Mark II 120 frames per second 4K, so about five times slow motion. This particular branch with berries on really stuck out and was isolated, but it only got lit up late in the day when the sun was coming along the length of the road. Early in the morning this was side lit and it didn't work at all. All the stills pictures however are taken on the OM-1 camera, I do prefer the autofocus over the Lumix for stills pictures. This is very typical waxwing behaviour. They sit on some trees close by, high up usually, where presumably they're digesting the berries they've already eaten. And then after about, let's say, 20 minutes, they fly down as a group. And often they land on the tops of these trees before they go down to the berries. So I would very quickly select one bird that was isolated against the sky with no twigs in the way and wait for it to leave that perch and then, using Pro Capture on the OM-1, flight photography is easy. You don't have to press the button until after the bird has launched into flight. The autofocus on the OM-1 would quite easily keep it in focus and keep the eye sharp. Shutter speed 2500th and upwards, lens wide open, ISO 1600. The hard part is waiting for the light. When it was dull, when it's cloudy, it's really not going to work. It's not just shutter speed you need the sun for. You really want the sun to put the detail in the feathers. You don't get that so much when it's a cloudy day. Also, I'm not a great fan of white skies. I like a blue sky or a dark moody sky. Colour's important to me. So I spend a lot of the time looking behind me, looking at the cloud, seeing if there's any blue sky coming across and watching the weather forecast on my mobile phone and I had some long waits for suitable conditions. When the sun wasn't shining, then you concentrate on birds just on the branches, and ideally avoid the sky. Concentrate on the birds when they're lower down, so they've got a green background, or even the buildings behind them, if the buildings are a nice colour. Now there are some houses there, and brickwork makes a lovely background. It gives you this orangey glow to it. It's like an out of focus reed bed. Here we have a blackbird against one of the buildings. The trouble is, most of these buildings are actually shops and they are covered in signs and white windows. That's no good. You've got to try and line the lens up somewhere where you're just getting the reddish glow of the brickwork rather than the signs. With this blackbird, it was difficult to avoid the two white windows to the left and right of it. So I just went in closer. I used the built-in 1.25 extender and that lost most of the, the white. Whichever camera body I was using, I only used the one lens, which is the OM 150 to 400 mil. Usually without the built-in 1.25 extender. I tried to get flight shots against the brickwork too, but it wasn't easy. The surface area of the bricks just wasn't large enough. 
I was there over three days and on the one day it got so cloudy in the middle of the day that I went away for a couple of hours and then came back when it brightened up. But flight wise it was quite difficult to do when the light was coming along the length of the road. You really wanted the morning light for flight photography. So that's when I did the birds on these isolated sprigs in the evenings. Waxwings feed very differently to the thrush species that feed on the same berries, such as song thrush, blackbird or ringoozles. You can see they come down and they eat very, very rapidly, grabbing one berry after another. Let's look at this at normal speed and see how quickly they feed. The thrush species don't feed this fast. And then they grab a few and back to that tall tree to sit there for 20 minutes maybe. This is my fourth visit to the site now and I haven't come to photograph today because it's very cloudy but I was driving past so I thought I might as well come in check them out see if they're still here see if there's any berries left and there's not all the berries have gone and I really thought it was all over and after just standing here for a few minutes the wax wings flew over me and went down the road I don't think this is going to work right next to me we have this green fence and behind the green fence we have some more berries but you can't get behind the fence and you can't photograph through it well that's it that's over for this site i have been elsewhere doing the wax wings but i won't be coming back here thanks for watching